Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you how you can leverage .NET to make PowerShell talk. In other words, we're going to be enabling text-to-speech within PowerShell. And surprisingly, this is really easy to do. You can actually do it with about three lines of code. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is that we are leveraging .NET in order to get this done. Now, I recently wrote a series of blog posts for the site on using .NET within PowerShell. But if you happen to miss those, let's take a look at what this involves. So as you can see, I've opened up my web browser and I've gone to learn.microsoft.com slash en-us slash .net slash API. And what we're looking at is the .net API browser. This is where you can go to look at all of the various .net namespaces, classes, and methods. So the namespace that we're going to be using is called system.speech.synthesis. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and find that particular namespace. And incidentally, there is a search box that you can use if you want, but sometimes it's just easier to scroll. And you can see the system.speech.synthesis namespace right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And so this takes me to the system.speech.synthesis namespace page. And right away, you can see all of the classes that exist within this namespace. Now, the class that I'm going to be using is called Speech Synthesizer. So if I scroll down just a little bit, you can see the Speech Synthesizer class right here. I'll go ahead and click on this. And then within this, we can see some examples. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see all of the properties and methods that apply to this particular class. Now, the method that I'm going to be using is called Speak. And you can see the speak method right here. And if I click on this, you're taken to a page with some coding samples. Now, the coding samples are written in C, not in PowerShell. But that's okay because it's actually really easy to leverage this within PowerShell. So before I show you how this works, I want to answer a big question. Why would you use .NET to do this? Well, there are two main reasons why you might want to use .NET within a PowerShell script. One reason is because .NET will allow you to do things that you can't do using native PowerShell. For example, there's no PowerShell commandlet that I know of that supports text-to-speech. So if we want to enable text-to-speech, we're going to have to leverage .NET. The other reason why you might use .NET within a PowerShell script is simply because .NET can simplify the coding. Because sometimes it might be possible to do something using native PowerShell, but it's a whole lot easier to use .NET. Now, I don't really have an example of how it's really long and cumbersome to enable text-to-speech through PowerShell without .NET and how .NET makes it easy because, as I said a moment ago, PowerShell doesn't natively support text-to-speech. However, I can show you an example from quite some time ago. You see, when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, I had an old Radio Shack color computer. And all the way back then, it was possible to do text-to-speech. But in order to do that, you had to have an add-on cartridge that would enable text-to-speech. And as I was preparing to record this video, I actually found a copy of the instruction manual for that sound speech cartridge online. So let's take a look really quickly. So here you can see the Color Computer Speech Sound Cartridge Instruction Manual. And the main thing that I wanted to show you is what's involved in creating text-to-speech. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. So this is what was involved in enabling text-to-speech on the old Radio Shack Color Computer. And so you'll notice that we have a couple of columns, decimal and hex, and then we have a series of commands. So if you wanted to enable text-to-speech on the old Radio Shack color computer using the speech and sound cartridge, what you had to do is manipulate individual bits. And you had to do so based on this reference table right here. And this table goes on. So what does all of this look like in programmatic form? Well, I don't want to go too deeply into this, but I'll give you a sample of what the code looks like. Let me go ahead and scroll up a little bit. This is a sample program that was provided in the instruction manual that would allow you to do text-to-speech. And at first glance, this really doesn't look all that complicated. But you'll notice that we have some statements in this program called peak and poke. Now, in the old Radio Check Basic, a peak statement would look at a particular memory address. A poke statement would insert a value into a particular memory address. So right here, we have an if statement that was based on a peak. So we're looking at a particular memory address and checking to see what its value is, and then returning a particular value based on the value that's in that memory address. Likewise, a poke statement, such as the one that you can see right here, is used to insert a value into a specific memory address. So even though this program doesn't really look all that complicated at first glance, 
it's doing direct bit manipulation in memory. So the point that I wanted to make by showing you all of that is that, at least in the past, enabling text-to-speech programmatically tended to be a complicated endeavor. In the case of PowerShell, though, it's super simple to do, thanks to .NET. So how does this work? Well, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the speak method from the .NET class speech synthesizer. And so on the surface, this looks like a fairly complicated example. As I mentioned earlier, though, in PowerShell, we only need three lines of code. So let's go ahead and take a look at those three lines of code. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And here's the script that I've created. So the very first line is add type. And we have to specify the assembly name that we're going to add. And the assembly name that I'm using is system.speech. The next thing that I had to do was to declare a variable. I'm calling that variable dollar sign talk. And I'm setting that equal to new dash object. And I'm setting the type name to system.speech.synthesis.speech synthesizer. Now remember, system.speech.synthesis is a .NET namespace. Speech synthesizer is a .NET class. I also mentioned that we're going to be leveraging a .NET method called speak. And you can see that method right here. So the dollar sign talk variable represents the .NET object that I've created. So once that variable has been created, all we have to do is reference that method. So here we have dollar sign talk, that's the .NET object, dot speak, that's the method that we want to use within that object. And so then the only thing that I have to do is to provide the string of text that I want the computer to speak. So let's take a look at how this works. Let me go ahead and switch over to PowerShell. I'll go ahead and run the script and I'm getting a security warning. I'll just press R to run it. With .NET, you can make PowerShell speak. And you can see that PowerShell was indeed able to speak. Now, the big question is, why might you want to use something like this? Well, this could be convenient in the case of long running scripts. Uh, for example, in my own environment, I have a backup script and I could see myself embedding a verbal prompt at the end of the script to let me know when it's finished running so that I know when my backup's complete without having to go look at the screen. You might also embed a verbal prompt in a long running script in response to a warning condition or an error condition that may have occurred. So that way, if something happens to go wrong on a script that you've left unattended, but that is within an earshot, then you can hear when something goes wrong as opposed to having to periodically get up and go look at the script to make sure that it's still running. At any rate, that's how you enable text-to-speech within PowerShell using .NET. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.